proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, Safety is No Accident. This is the story of Dud Grayson, Captain Dudley Grayson, and a girl, Janet Shields. Captain Grayson meets Janet when he is sent from his home base in California to Bailey Air Force Base in Texas on a mission. Janet is the kind of girl anyone would hope to meet on a mission. The trouble was that Ray Billings had seen her first. Our play will begin in a moment. Young man, if you're a high school graduate, are unmarried and otherwise qualified, there's a future for you as an aviation cadet in the United States Air Force. You'll receive a year of the world's finest flying training and graduate as a second lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. Here's the opportunity of a lifetime to serve your country and build a career that will fit you for responsible positions in both military and commercial aviation. Visit your Army and Air Force recruiting station for details. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production Safety is no accident. At Norton Air Force Base near San Bernardino, California, Brigadier General Richard J. O'Keefe of the Directorate of Flight Safety Research is talking to one of the Air Force men assigned to the base, Captain Dudley Grayson. Uh, Captain Grayson, until Sheffield's replaced, you'll be handling B-50s in addition to your other work. Yes, sir. I understood that when I heard Sheffield was to leave. I uh, know you're familiar with the aircraft. Your record shows a good many hours in B-50s. Yes, sir. I've flown them a good deal. Very good. And, oh, yes, uh, you'd better familiarize yourself with the new manual. There have been some recent modifications. Yes, sir. Now, this is extra work for you, but you've got the brains and the temperament to get along here. You're quick, and you're experienced, and you're a plugger. We need men like you in the Air Force, particularly in the Flight Safety Directorate. Thank you. Captain Grayson studied the new manual on the B-50, not knowing how soon he would need to put his knowledge to test. Not knowing, for instance, that in the air over central Texas, a B-50 was in trouble. There was a fire in the number two engine left wing. The B-50's commander, Major Fox, had tried all emergency procedures to put out the fire without succeeding. And, afraid that the gasoline tanks would ignite and explode, has given orders to the crew to bail out. He's radioed his position and condition to the nearest CAA radio station. The stricken plane is over wild, deserted country where there's no chance of it harming anyone. All right, we're level. Altitude about 6,000 feet. We've been in radio contact with the airways. They'll see that we get picked up. It looks as though it'll be a long hike to civilization, so let's stick together. It'll be easier to be picked up that way. All right, see you on the ground. Happy landing. Well, that went off smoothly anyway. Everyone got out without much trouble. Yeah, I can see all the shoots. Gosh, I sure hated to give up that plane. But if that fire ever got through the firewall and at the tanks... Hmm, guess we didn't get out much too soon. Glad I didn't try to fight that fire any longer. We might have all been lost. Now, there's the first man to reach the ground. Well, lucky the weather's good. That makes it easier anyway. <laughs> Now, 
And so, uh, Captain Grayson, you'll proceed at once with your team to Bailey Air Force Base, Belmont, Texas, to find the cause of that fire, which resulted in the loss of a B-50. Yes, sir. Now, uh, Captain Madison is the flying safety officer at Bailey. He'll give you every bit of information he's gathered and will cooperate with you fully, as will Colonel Shields, the CO at Bailey. I'm sure of that, sir. Now, your team's a good one. You've flown the B-50 under varying conditions. Spencer's been a flight engineer on many B-50 missions. The representative of the manufacturer knows the craft inside out. I couldn't ask for a better team. I'll do my best to keep this out of the cause unknown file. Good. I know you will. Good luck. And don't hesitate to ask for help or information about anything you don't know. Thank you, Colonel Shields. General O'Keefe said you'd give me all possible help. He didn't exaggerate. Oh, thank you. I'd like to see this cleared up, Captain. Everyone got out safely, but I don't like to lose any aircraft. I know that. And you don't lose many. Since we started pushing our flying safety program, the accident rate for the whole Air Force has gone down about one-third. Now, this job of yours is a little like being a detective, isn't it? Yes, sir, in a way. Mm -hmm. Only instead of a whodunit, we're usually looking for a what done it. I see. Well, anything we can do to help you, just let us know. Ask Captain Madison here for any information you need or any help. That's right, Captain. Thank you. I'll do that. Well, first of all, now that we've gone over the reports, uh, we're going to take a look at the wreckage and talk to the crew. Right. As I said, just let me know. Thank, Thank you, Colonel. You know. Say, Madison, I've heard about Texas girls. Are they all like that? As a Texan, you Yankee, I should say yes. But as a fellow flyer, I'll have to be honest and say no. But it would be nice if they were. Hmm. Now, don't try evasive action. She's coming this way. You seem to have the course plotted correctly. Hi there, Harry. Dad in? Uh, just came from his office. He was in a minute ago. Good. How have you been? H how's Ellie? Fine. She's fine. Oh, Janet, this is Captain Grayson. Dud, Janet Shields. How do you oh, do? How do you do? Uh, you know, uh, he was just trying to give me some unlikely story that all Texas girls were like you. Uh, why, you dog, you, I never said... Never mind, Harry Madison. You know I wouldn't believe a word you said anyway. Well, ma'am, if he has insulted you, I I'm at your service. And as a southerner, I take his remarks on southerner. your beauty... At... You don't sound it, Captain. Well, extreme south of Oregon, ma'am. Climate falls. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to be from Minnesota myself, hitting. If you two characters will get off your roses and magnolia talk, I'm meeting Ellie at the officers' club for dinner. I was going to ask Captain Grayson, too. Would you join us, Janet? Uh, why, uh... Won't you? Please? <laughs> well, I I'll see what Dad's doing, if he needs me tonight. And to think, I thought this would be a dull trip. Is this your regular line, Captain? The name is Dud, and I don't have a line that I know of. Oh? You mean you just ad-lib the kind of remarks you've been making all evening without any thought? I don't know what I've been saying, but I certainly mean every word of it. <laughs> Aren't you taking a good deal for granted? You mean that you might be married, engaged, promised to another? Something like that. And I was afraid you were. Anybody as pretty and nice as you? Outright flattery again. Nice, but crude. Why did you change your mind? Or did you ask Harry Madison? No, I didn't say a word to him. But you came tonight, and you've been dancing with me and letting me talk on and on. <laughs> the things you've been saying, no girl would be apt to try to stop you. They sound nice to feminine ears. Did you see, you're the kind of girl... You saw what I thought about you. You'd have told me. Don't you think maybe you're taking this a little seriously? You hardly know me. I hardly know you. Well, that's an excuse. I don't have to know you. You don't have to know me. You know that what I'm saying is true. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Well, there's nothing to say. Oh, but maybe I have been a little sudden at that. I'll be big-hearted and give you... Oh, a couple of days, and then see what you have to say then. But I'm warning you right now, if I have any spare time here at all, I'm going to be going after you. Uh, now, I've read the reports, I've looked at the wreckage, and I've got to ask you all again just what happened. Major Fox? 
Well, Captain Billings, the first pilot, was flying. First thing I noticed was the sudden and severe vibration. That's about the only way I can put it. I looked at Billings and the instruments. He and the flight engineer were doing the same thing. Well, did you hear anything or see anything unusual immediately preceding the vibration? No, I'm afraid not. You know the way it is. You're flying along smoothly, thinking of a thousand things, watching and checking. Then all of a sudden, something happened. Now, sometimes your first warning of any kind of trouble is after it's happened. A glance showed that number two engine was the source of the trouble. Billings throttled number two engine down to idling at once. Well, there seems to be no question in anyone's mind but that the trouble started in the number two engine. But what caused it, we don't know. And then everything happened very quickly. Portside scanner reported smoke coming back from the wing and flame. By that time, I was trying to figure out what to do. We tried all emergency procedures without any success. Mm -hmm. I'd radioed that we had a fire and gave our position and started looking for an emergency landing spot. But there wasn't anything that looked even vaguely smooth. I was afraid of the gas tanks. Didn't know how long the fire wall would keep the heat from getting to a tank. So I gave the order to bail out. And you were the last to leave, you say? Yeah. As I said, I guess it was best that we couldn't try to land because fire must have reached a gas tank soon after we bailed out. I was parachuting down when I heard the explosion, but I couldn't see much except a lot of smoke. Thanks, Major. Captain Billings, how about you? Well, I haven't much to add to the Major's report. I was flying, as he said, everything was fine. Suddenly the plane started shaking from vibration. We didn't have the power we'd had. The number two prop started to run away. I throttled it down. Then it sounded like somebody was shooting at us. And you can be sure no one was. And I'll take your word for that. A vibration must have broken a fuel or oil line. That would account for the fire. I was the one who noticed the smoke. At first it was, well, it looked dark and thick like oil. And then, well, I don't know what it looked like later. It was too thick, gray, smoky. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sergeant. Uh, as you said, Captain Billings, it was probably a fuel line. But something has to happen to set up the vibration that caused a fuel line break. And if we can find enough of the pieces... Maybe we'll be able to tell what it was. How are you coming? Nothing new. You've been here over a week now. You don't know any more than you did before? Not a lot. At least we know a few things that didn't cause it. It was a broken fuel line, as you said. But what caused it to break, we don't know. Well, what do you got to go on? On a burnt and twisted metal. Yeah, it's pretty well scattered, too. Have you found all the pieces? We haven't yet. So? Where does that get you? Nowhere. Yeah. You seem to be doing pretty well along some lines. Oh? Or is Janet why you're sticking to this so stubbornly? Uh, look, I'm doing a job here. I was sent here. I'm doing my best. What I do after 5 o'clock is my business. You're through work for the day, or I wouldn't have brought it up. I haven't anything against you at all, Grayson, except that, well, I don't like a guy to move into a base for a brief mission and try to steal my girl. I didn't know she was your girl. You come to think of it, I don't know it now. You'll find out. Goodbye, Billings. What's the rush? Where are you going? I just remembered to the nearest phone to call Janet and see if she's busy. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Safety is No Accident. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Daring and imagination, courage and science. These have propelled us straight into the jet age, the age of air speed faster than sound, of flight into the farthest frontiers of the sky. Young men, how would you like to master one of those jet planes, sleek, powerful aircraft which represent the last word in military aviation? They're considered safer to fly than the old propeller planes. If you qualify for and successfully complete the interesting, exacting training of an aviation cadet, you'll have the chance. As a pilot in the United States Air Force, practicing a challenging career in the service of your country, you'll start as a second lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. If you're between 19 and 26 and a half, in good health, single, and meet mental and educational requirements, you're eligible to apply for the 16-month flight training course. See if you can qualify at your nearest Air Force base or local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, 
And now we present the second act of Safety is No Accident. Captain Dudley Grayson of the Flight Safety Research Directorate has been sent from Norton Air Force Base in California to Bailey Air Force Base near Belmont, Texas, to head a team investigating the cause of a crash of a B-50 bomber. In the time he's been there, Captain Grayson and his team have made no progress at all in finding out what caused the crash. But he's fallen hard himself for Janet Shields, the daughter of Colonel Shields, commanding officer of Bailey Air Force Base. That was a good movie, Dad. Yeah. And didn't you like it? That was all right. I've seen a snail show more enthusiasm. I liked it. I'm sorry. I liked it, too. You're not very enthusiastic about anything now. What's wrong, Dad? Hmm? Oh, nothing. You sure? I've been wondering. Maybe I said something or did something. You're not like yourself, not the way you were when you first came here. Well, I met you, and that changed my whole life. The way you've been, the change hasn't been for the better. No, I'm messing up everything. I was sent here on a routine mission. Turned into something wonderful because I met you. Thank you. Why isn't it still wonderful? Is it your work? Your mission? Is that it? Partly. I'm not getting anywhere. Maybe if I didn't want so much to be with you, I'd be able to find out what caused this. Well, then that's what it is. You're afraid you're, you're letting your feelings get in the way of your duty. Maybe. I guess I shouldn't have told you that. Why not? That's all your trouble is? Well, it's sort of flattering in a way. Yeah, but I still don't know if I'm doing all I should be. Could be. Now, let me tell you something. I've been in the Air Force longer than you have, in a way. I, I grew up in it. I can tell you this much. Any time they don't think you're doing your job and doing it right, they'll let you know, and in no uncertain terms. Yes, but I wonder if they know how little progress I've made. You send in the required reports, don't you? Of course. But I've already overstayed the usual allotted time here with my team. But my CO wants this cleared up. All I've had from Norton is keep at it. Well, then stop worrying about that part of it. Well, I can see why you're upset. You, you like to do a good job. Has anybody here been saying anything to you? Look, just forget I said anything at all. I'm going back into the hangar with my team and what additional men your father can spare me. And I'm going over every part of that wrecked plane all over again. And, uh, how long will that take? I'm not sure. A few more days, certainly. And you'll be here a little longer? As far as I can see, yes. Why? There's going to be a dance Friday night. I thought maybe... Oh, can we go? I, I mean, will you go with me? I'd love to. <laughs> Even if I did have to ask you myself. Well, Captain Grayson, how are things going? Oh, good morning, Colonel. Badly, I'd say, badly. You seem to have uh, five or six planes spread out here. Yeah, you wouldn't think all this could come from one plane. It's a good thing you could make this hangar available to us. We seem to need plenty of room. Yes, you do seem to need room. I never saw anything like it. The less progress we make, the more room we need. The way your work is divided into teams is quite efficient. Well, that's standard. In general, my men and I stay here and inspect everything. And your men, who know the countryside, are scouring the area of the flight path looking for parts. Mm -hmm. What haven't you found? A trace of the propeller and prop gear housing of number two engine. Mm -hmm. Now, we know the trouble must have started there. And it's still missing. There are details of men combing some of that rough countryside. Maybe they'll find something. Now, keep it up, Captain. If you need more help, just let me know. The base is at your disposal. Thank you, sir. You've given me every bit of help I've asked for. Usually before I've asked for it. I want to see this thing licked as badly as you do, Captain. Those were my men in that plane. That was one of my aircraft. I thought you were a flyer, Grayson. You look more like a storekeeper. You want any parts? There's most of a B-50 here. Doug Grayson, the flying junk man. If you've got nothing to do, you can help. Otherwise, leave me alone. I'm busy. What is all this junk? It's a new collection. One of the search parties just came back with a whole truckload of odds and ends, and I'm going over them. Well, the colonel said we were all to help. What can I do? 
Well, you can help me check this stuff here. Hey, what's that? A hunk of aluminum off the fuselage. Well, that's something new. It's got a crease in it. It wasn't there when the plane was made. Let's take a look at that. Well, what are you so excited for? It's just a little piece of metal. Sure, it's got a crease in it. A lot of things happened to it since it was put on that plane, including an explosion and a crash. Look at this. You see? It's got the crease. There are little bits of paint clinging to that crease, yellow paint. I've got to find that search party. See where they got that. <laughs> Uh, Colonel Shields, this is Captain Grayson. Is there a helicopter available on the base? Of course. What's up? Well, the last materials that came in from a search party, there were parts of an engine nacelle from the number two engine, and there was a piece of fuselage with a crease in it and yellow paint in the crease. Well, it seems to mean something to you, but I, I don't get it. Well, that yellow paint must have come from a propeller tip. So? Well, I talked to the search party that brought the engine nacelle in. They found it nowhere near where the main wreckage was found. I've got a hunch. I have a hunch, too, that your hunch is going to prove right. Thanks, sir. I hope so. Lieutenant McGowan will take you wherever you want to go. He'll be waiting for you at base operations. Good. Thank you, sir. I'll report. Hello, Janet. Yes. Uh, oh, Dad, I didn't expect you. Uh, who were you expecting? No one. Just you said you'd call later. Uh, Janet, I I'm going to do a bit of searching. I may be back tonight, but probably it won't be until tomorrow. We still have a date for tomorrow night, right? Of course. Why not? I just wondered. Or are you trying to back out on it? I just wanted to let you know that I might not be back until late tomorrow. Is everything all right, Doug? Oh, sure. Fine. <laughs> well, good luck. I'll see you tomorrow night. Or before. said I'd be back. I am late. But she'd wait. I'm sure she'd wait. But maybe she went on to the dance to wait for me there. Of course, I have to have these findings verified, Colonel. But you're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Uh, tell me how you found it and what you found. Well, it was that piece of fuselage with the crease and yellow paint on it. Yes. That crease was put there when something hit it. And the paint showed what hit it. The propeller tips are painted yellow. That gave me the clue. I'm with you so far. Well, it was the only thing I had to go on. If a prop blade had broken off the number two engine and it made that scar in the fuselage, it would have set up a severe vibration in the engine, breaking fuel and oil lines and starting a fire. Yes, yes, I can see that. Well, when they found a piece of the engine nacelle, nowhere near where most of the wreckage was, I got an idea. I decided the propeller and gear section must have shaken loose some time before. So I used the helicopter to backtrack on the plane's flight path. After a while, we spotted the prop. One prop blade had broken off near the hub. Oh, say, that was very smart, figuring it out that way. Working out what had happened and where to look for the engine. <laughs> now that I look back on it, it seems pretty obvious. Well, Captain, any problem is simple after we know the answer. You'll find that's true of everything. I think you did a very good job. You didn't get discouraged and you kept plugging away. Thank you, sir. Oh, but you're wrong. I, I got awfully discouraged. And more credit to you. We're going to hear more of you. Thank you, sir. You will, anyway. If I can find Janet. Janet? Oh, well, I think she went to the dance tonight with uh, Captain Billings, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. Everyone's gone home. Dance was over about an hour ago. Did you see Janet Shields around? No, sir, I didn't. Big crowd here tonight. Didn't get much chance to talk to any of the people from around the base here. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. Well, try it once more. She isn't home by now. Janet. Dad, where were you? Where was I? But Dad said you were back, and when I didn't hear from you, I called the officer's quarters, and they said you were gone. Didn't you go to the dance with Billings? No, I've been right here waiting for you. I called a dozen times. All I got was a busy signal. I oh, thought... Oh, Dad, the line's been out of order all evening. <laughs> and I thought... Janet, hold everything. I'll be right over. 
We've solved more than one mystery tonight. Come on, go away, will you? All of you. Scram! I got a letter, that's all. Sure. Didn't any of you illiterates ever see a letter before? Another? Oh, isn't that enough for you that General O'Keefe tells us all what a fine job you did? How you worked out a problem and how new orders have been issued on the B-50. How they now insist on non-operation of that type of prop for those planes still using that uh, type of prop. Oh, cut it out, will you? Besides being held up as an example to us, you get letters from some <laughs> gal named Janet every day or two. How stupid can a dame get? What do you mean? She's got more brains in her little finger than all you characters put together. I knew there was something wrong with her. She keeps the brains in her fingers. <laughs> Probably wears a thimble on her little pointed head. Oh, go on. Beat it, will you? Can't you give a guy a little peace? Okay, boys. Dad wants a little quiet. Now, quiet. Quiet. All right. All right. If you won't leave me alone. Good dog. You've been gone for six weeks today. It seems like forever. Dad finally told me what I've been waiting for. He's been talking about it, but I was afraid to write it to you in case it didn't work out. He has to go to Washington for a month or longer. I can go with him or go visit my Aunt Stella at Lake Arrowhead. By my figuring, that's within 50 miles of your base. I really, I really think, think I should go for I a, go visit, for a don't you? So, if all goes well, you can start looking for me by the end of next week. Dad seems very pleased with you. He says you should be pleased with yourself, knowing that your work is helping to save lives and planes and money. He likes you, you know. Takes after his daughter that way. I'm counting the days until I get there. All my love, Janet. Proudly, we hail the officers and men of the Flight Safety Research Directorate at Norton Air Force Base, San Bernardino, California. Here's an important word today about your tomorrow. There's a future in flight. Yes, for you young men between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half who have completed high school and are otherwise qualified, there's an excellent opportunity for a great career in your expanding Air Force. You can secure an important job as a pilot, navigator, radar observer, or flight engineer and fly the mighty aircraft of this jet age. Remember, there's a future in flight. Visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for details today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.